The 1969 Ford Mustang Mach 1, coming up next. Hello once again Mustang fans, are you ready for a brand new unboxing video right down here on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage? Well if so, you're in luck because today we're going to look at this amazing Mach 1 model kit that's come out a lot of times by AMT Ertl. So before we begin ripping off the lid on this box, let's go down and check out all the original box arts and then we'll get right into this great review. The 1969 Mach 1 Mustang stood apart from the standard sport roof via a special grille with driving lights, matte black center hood section with functional air scoop, quick fill gas cap and black honeycomb rear applique. And now we're going to open the lid and examine our AMT Ertl 1969 Mustang Mach 1. And as you can see it does have the upgrades to it. The little hood scoop in here, the honeycomb grille, the extra parking lights, and these wheels, which are basically the same as the Torino and the Talladega. So, pretty cool all in all. We just turn our box lid up here. You can see, of course, what the finished model looks like with the cool air scoop and the interior, and the side profile view, as well as the same three quarter that we see on the side of the box. And just zoom up for a minute. Turn it up on end, there is the Mustang. And then on this side, of course, this model came out in 2005. It's skill level two for ages 10 and up. Requires glue and some paint to get it all going. Now this kit has come out a few times in the past. I do believe going all the way back to 1969. So let's just pull the lid off here and examine what you see. Now, unfortunately, this is a secondhand model that I got somewhere. But there's our instructions. We've got our decal sheet coming up in here. Then we've got chrome components. And then somebody has taken the body and painted it this metallic green, which is a nice green. Unfortunately, there's one problem with it. They never scraped the seam lines and they never removed the little piece out of the window. So we'll deal with that in a minute. And then I've got all the gray pieces in a bag, thankfully. Only got as far as that body. There's our glass and all our tires. So what I'll do is I'll clear this box out of the way and then we'll take a look at those awesome Mustang instructions. Welcome back Mustang fans and here we have our instructions for our AMT 1969 Mach 1 Mustang. And if we flip these open we can see that it had a great history under here, but just to sort of speed it up a little bit while we're on film, it does say that in 68 they put in the 428 Cobra jet into the Mach 1 69. In 69 Ford came up with a new name and striking new look to showcase the muscle car horsepower while creating the original classic and now legendary Mach 1. Completely restyled for 69 model year, the Mustang was longer, lower, and wider with a bigger engine compartment. Okay, and then it's saying that they stuffed in the 428 Cobra. So, I think the standard Mustang Mach 1 must have had the 350. But this one, of course, being special, has the bigger block. This one came out from RC2, so like most kits out of RC2, you know they really didn't clean these up at all the way that Round 2 would in the future. Anyway, there's the important things you need to read and how to use your tools and all that stuff. Building tips for the advanced modeler. Now we're going to open this up. And one good thing is RC2 did rework the instructions, considering that this kit has been around the block for decades. So it's always nice. 
So now let's zoom in and check out our engine assembly. All right, so looking at the instructions, we actually have two complete engine blocks in this. One, of course, is the stock one. So I do believe this is the 351 Cleveland. Uh, you Ford guys, if you would leave a comment down below, if you think this is a 351 Cleveland or something, let me know. It does have the Cobra uh, valve covers on here. In fact, both of them do. So we're going to take a look at our stock engine first. So we have engine block 29 and whatever the other side is, possibly 28, <laughs> going together here. They didn't actually put it in. Okay, and then we've got our air cleaner, our carburetor, going on to this intake manifold. On both sides, you're going to have valve covers, cylinder heads, exhaust manifolds, both engine blocks, and transmission on there as well. The oil pan popping up underneath, the front cover going on, starter motor into the side of the engine, near the transmission at the back, the alternator, your fan, fan belt, and hose, and front cover. So now let's see the the uh, additional custom motor. Now we start off our custom motor with a plated fan, chrome of course. This one has the air conditioner in it. So you got the extra belts on there, the alternator, and a different front cover, number 21 for this one. The other front cover was number 36. So let's see what happens with the block. And here we have the block Quebecois, I mean the engine block. <laughs> and you've got engine block number 17 and 18 and see here the transmission is 27 and 43 they're both separate and they'll glue together so of course the transmissions are aluminum I don't know if this is an actual standard transmission it kind of looks like one or a little stubby automatic but anyway I guess we'll find out as we go along okay so here we have a different carburetor the uh, intake manifold a different one so you could actually display two motors side by side with this. Uh, valve cover, a cylinder head, exhaust manifold on both sides. There's an oil filler cap on here. Then that front assembled engine cover will glue on with your oil filter going in there. And the oil pan. And then there's a part D to this, so we'll just take a look at that. And now we're looking at engine assembly 1D. And here we have an air scoop that goes through the hood, as well as an air induction box, which will glue onto our carburetor. Or you can use the custom air cleaner, which it looks like a ram air, actually. It's got that slot in there. And then there's an air cleaner hose down below, and then valve cover hose going on the top. And there it shows where the starter goes on this. Next up, in step number two, we have our tire wheel assembly. And 2A is our stock wheel, and it says assemble two sets of each. So we have that stock Ford wheel, which again is like on the Torino and Talladega. And it will go into these Goodyear tires. And then we've got our rear wheel back and the front wheel, the back of the front wheel. And this one has the pins that goes through. So it could be originally an MPC kit. I'll have to look at those boxes there. And then we get into our new tires coming up. Now this kit must have had a revamp in the late 90s, early 2000s, because here we have our Goodyear Eagle type tires. These are directional. So it says follow order of assembly is shown. Note the arrowheads located on the sides of the tires point to the front of the tire as it will appear on the assembled model. So these had to go a certain way on the left side and the right side. And then we have our custom 90s to early 2000s type chrome wheel going on here, which I do believe some of these were in the Corvettes. Same as these tires were in the Corvette kits. And then our front wheel retainer, which is a pin, and the wheel backs and all that. And then in the rear, of course, we have the solid wheel backs going in. But again, it says to watch that rotation. Panel 3 is showing the first part in our interior assembly. It says paint unplated interior pieces semi gloss black unless otherwise indicated. Okay, and you can also look up uh, your Mustangs here to see what type of interior you like. So we've got our nice dashboard here with the dual pods. The air conditioner unit glues in there if you want it, because remember, you, <laughs> you have a car that may or may not have the air conditioning. There is, in the custom version, we've got our 
uh, tachometer gluing onto the steering wheel, and then there's a cluster of other gauges. These are the stock version, which are gluing underneath the steering column. And then the steering wheel, and of course our two pedals going on here. One for clutch, one for brake. 3B or not 3B? Now that is a question. Okay, there's our instrument panel, which will glue into the bucket. So again, a 60s era kit. Shift lever popping in. There's this nice little retainer clip right there. Stock rear seat will glue in, and then our stock front seats, and these are a one-piece bucket. And you have the option of seat belts in the front as well. Section 3C shows our custom interior. So there's our dashboard again dropping in with the gear shift lever going in the center console. And here we have competition seats with a four-point seat belt harness, as well as the roll cage going in and no seat in the back. You glue on a fire extinguisher in here just for safety. Location optional. Section four here shows our chassis assembly. This is 4A. So this is just the basic chassis going together. There are some options for stock and custom, which will be coming up. And here you, of course, have your choice to drop in either the custom engine that you built or the stock engine, which will go right in there. This has the option to raise or lower your car, depending on what you want to do with these three holes in here, the series of holes. And of course, you do have your choice of the stock Mustang wheels or these like sort of 1987, 89 type Corvette wheel and tires with those eagles directionals and then our exhaust pipes will go underneath here as well so just for the added extra detail section 4b is the stock undercarriage and here actually it's fairly easy <laughs> lock chassis assembly but this is och chassis assembly <laughs> okay anyway uh differential leaf springs are one unit as well as the drive shaft and this all hooks up behind your engine and glues into the back over top of your wire axle so it covers it, much like in the MPC Dukes of Hazard kit. And here in 4C is our custom chassis. So the only difference here is in, you are using these exhaust pipes, which are basically straight out dumps. So you've got the bent pipe gluing onto the end of your manifold, which has come up in here somewhere, and then hook up to the long exhaust pipes there, which really is interesting that in 4A, it showed to glue the stock uh, exhaust pipes with mufflers on the back, and here we're just going and bypassing those. Anyway, there's those wheels again, mounted all in. So that's how you do it for your custom. And here we get the final assembly in 5A. It says choose the body color you would like. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell you what Mustang body colors were back then. Anyway, cement all body parts to be painted to hood or to body, tape hood in place. Uh, if you're planning to use decal 13 figure 5C, you must sand Mustang from the rear trunk lid. Good to know. Paint entire assembly as a unit. After painting has thoroughly dried, paint any details in cement, clear and plated parts in place. Okay, so there's a lot going on here, but not all that much. There's our grill going in, the headlights on both sides, the front bump body pan glues underneath here then you got the special front bumper with fog lights that you can glue on they're optional the fog lamps hood do not cement body color on top underside is flat black uh, optional hood scoop omit if using custom engine assembly figure 1d uh, body color underside flat black okay then we got side mirrors going in the little scoops all over the place. Those are optional. The rear, or the body itself, the rear body pan, rear bumper, and tail lights all are going in in this assembly. Now 5B is the fun part where all the components go together. And here we have a, you get a choice of custom or stock. That's a trunk lock cover would glue onto there. The custom looks like a star. The stock one just looks like a round medallion. There's our body all assembled going on to the interior. The firewall will glue in here, or glues on the end there, pops in. And then you've got your radiator wall with radiator molded in. The horns are going on one side. Radiator cover going on there, that's plated. 
the battery, gloss black, and then there's another cover which glues into here. And all of this stuff pops right on your assembled chassis. Finally, we have our decals, which are optional. And here we've got decal number 12, which is a nice pinstripe that goes along the top of the spoiler with Mustang as a decal in there. That's why they said to sand it off if you're going to use it. And then you've got your license plate gluing on there. There's a decal that goes on there on both sides. And then there's some nice striping that'll go onto your car as well. There's one up top and one down below. It's all dependent on what you want to do. And we'll figure it out when we see our instruction sheet. Our uh, de decal sheet. And that completes our look at the Mustang Mach 1 instruction sheet by AMT Ertl. And when we come back, we're going to take a look at our plastic components. Here's our Mustang Mach 1 body, which somebody has painted a very interesting metallic green. But unfortunately, they never scraped off any of the seam lines before they laid this nice color down. Uh, sad to say. It has a little bar in here that says remove, which somebody never did. I guess they didn't read directions. <laughs> and then we've got our seam line running along there, going across here, and then kicks up into the roof up along there somewhere and comes down, yep, along this top fender edge. So we're going to have to sand that out while it's painted. That's never fun. And I don't think this is like an enamel that I can strip with easy off oven cleaner or something like that. I think this is a uh, color match lacquer. So <laughs> that's going to be exciting to try to cure. I saw some sink marks somewhere. Oh yeah, there it is right there. Sink marks on top of the hood here, or on top of the fenders, pardon me. There should be a little line in here, sort of to separate the fenders from this panel. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mustang guys. Okay, leave it in the comments down below. Um, if this was your model, what color would you like to paint it? Do you like this green? I like It, it is nice green, but uh, this is all chunky on here. I think they had this spray painted on a box or something. Psh, psh, you know, so then the paint pooled under here and it kind of locked the bottom on. So what I do when I paint these things is I find like a pop can. Now here... I've got a lid from a spray can. Pop cans are a little bit better, but you know this is expanding the body. I put the pop can underneath there, and then I can hold it and then spray. And then you don't get this clumping along the bottom. So there's a little tip. I'll make a proper video of that one day. <laughs> Maybe with Danny the dog. Anyway, so there's our back panel. And you can see a nice Mustang lettering on here. And then a little spot for that gas filler to go in. And our headlamps, pardon me, tail lamps, are going in there. Underneath, there are a lot of mold marks in this body, which thankfully you can really see them with the green paint in there. So again, number 16 hobby blade, they're everywhere. They're on the bottom of there. A couple little spots here for the hood that's supposed to rest on. The little tongs or uh, pieces right there. Overall, though, it's a very good body. It's just kind of too bad that somebody chose to paint it without cleaning it up. So next up, I've decided to show you guys the interior tub. And here again, RC2 always had a steering wheel in a little plastic bag, scotch tape to the interior buckets in so many kits. And I don't know what the fascination with this was, if it broke off or something, or what they were doing. <laughs> so if somebody worked for AMT and knows why this was always happening in this era of kits, let me know in the comments below because it's mysterious. I think they just wanted us to use paint thinner back here to try to get the tape residue off. <laughs> okay, wow, I thought the Duke's kit was pretty bad, but this old mold needs total revamping. If uh, this comes out under round two, let me know if this is way better. Um, there, of course, are mold marks. And not under the seat or something, but no, right in front and right behind. So you're going to see that. So again, at number 16 Hobby Blade. It's pretty, actually, uh, soft on mold detail along the panels, but there is something there. Something to amuse yourself with, I guess. A center console. And then underneath, interesting, there's some little rectangles on here. No mold marks underneath. Never know why they can't put those up there where no one's going to see. But no, got to throw it in the interior. Must be a special reason behind it. 
a little bit of junk right in there that will need to be cleaned off. Uh, if you want your roll bar and all that looking right. But anyway, there's our 1960s era interior made in the 60s. Following that, we have our chassis pan here. And again, lots of mold marks and things that need to be cleaned up with that hobby blade. Turning this over, there's detail underneath, but it's kind of a hot mess. You'll need to scrape and clean it down. There's a bit of a fender arch here that just disappears on this side. <laughs> Inner fender well. Little teeny gas tank. Everything kind of seems teeny on this model, and I'll show you more in a minute. There's the front with the three holes for raising and lowering it. You could go really low if you want, medium, or jack it up real high. So I guess you got uh, lowered stock height and then, you know, drag racer or something weird with the front and the back end up, jacked up, I guess. There is some nice detail on here, but again, the flash and everything just kind of ruins it. But anyway, remember these molds, some of them have been running solid since they first came out in the 60s, and no one ever bothered to clean them. Okay, much like the 69 Ford Galaxy that I reviewed earlier in this series, I thought I would just take all the parts trees and lay them out in one big shot. Because this is basically the rest of the gray pieces, and as you can see, there's not all that much in here, and not all that much that's fully exciting, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> a lot of flash on these pieces. Again, like I said, they've been run through the mill so many times it isn't even funny anymore. Uh, okay, so on this tree here, we have our front pan, our rear pan, parts of the roll cage, the pin, the other one broke off here. That's for our wheels. Now what's interesting is there's a deep dish wheel here, but there's only one. The other one would have been here, but it was never molded. So, I don't know, but I think this is like the old box arts. There's got to be one there that's like a drag race version of this, and this is a carryover from that. There's the transmission for the bigger motor. The little scoop there, which does say Cobra 428 on it. Uh, oh no, that's a little scoop for the top for the shaker thing. There is another hood scoop over here that has a 428 Cobra on it. There's our Ram Air type air cleaner, or whatever's going on with it. Exhaust manifolds and hoses, all kinds of cool stuff. So that's that part tree. Here we have, well, there's our dashboard. And here we have our engine components and seat belts. Uh, this is the engine for this transmission. So I'm kind of assuming this is all the 429 on this side. There's our little battery, and, and like I said, this is tiny. And then our roll bar and the gauges, the side scoops for the body. There's the steering wheel. I took it out of the bag. More of the smaller block engine components in here. The other wheel backs for the rear. There's our hood with a little square hole in it for either the, the shaker scoop or this to go on the top. And then our radiator with the radiator support wall. By the way, with the arrow. And our firewall. So, oh, and then here we've got our seats, bucket seats and stock, and then the ones for the drag racer, or the custom, pardon me, and then our rear axle and differential and those stock exhaust pipes. So what would be interesting to see here? Well, let's move some of these bits out of the way and kind of just bring this up to the camera. Okay, so... There's our hood and firewall, and turning it over, you can see big sink marks under here. Those ones you could fill, and they do have a nice area where you could actually get at it with sandpaper, but still kind of sucks doing mold marks. Some in the back of the dash, and some on the side of the firewall, but then our horns are going there, and I do think this is the front facing the grill. So you want to black out this side. Anyway... There's all our bits there. So then we get our seats, and there is some nice tuck and roll on here. On all of them, including the racing seats. So that's always nice. And then we've got our bigger engine here. And there's nice detail on it, and like I said, you can actually display two engines, which is always nice. 
seat belts and all the other goodies all along in this one. Again, that battery is really tiny. I don't know if the real Mustang battery is that small. Maybe, because these were used, of course, in uh, Trans Am racing. So, maybe they needed it for cornering and lightweight. Again, turning this over. Mold mark right in the center, which you're going to have to sand out of there. Little bits of junk and detail around here that need to be cleaned up. Dashboard, of course. Looks fairly much like a proper Mustang. Even has a wood grain in here and there. Gee, I guess I'm showing you all the parts trees. <laughs> and then there's our other smaller motor. So once it's all together, this thing should look decent. You're going to have to clean up quite a bit of it, of course, with the uh, number 16 hobby blades and files, sandpaper, whatever you can throw at this thing, just to make it look better. But basically, this is all... Look, there's a nice steering wheel. This is your Mustang, people. Now we can examine my favorite parts tree of all time, which, of course, as you know, is the chrome tree. Now, there is a lot of remnants from earlier versions of this kit still stuck on the chrome tree, which have no explanation in our instruction sheets. However, I know a person on Photkey, which is a photo sharing website, a uh, old one, <laughs> that actually has old instructions. So, maybe if you look, you can find where some of this stuff goes. But there's all kinds of drag linkage bits and all kinds of cool things in these extended rear or uh, front axle springs for, of course, a fixed dragster style axle system. And then you got these shock absorbers with springs on them and all kinds of cool stuff. But that's in this section that's not on the instruction sheet. There's our gas filler cap, both of them custom and stock. There's these wheels which were added in in the 90s, 2000s era. There's our Cobra style wheels. And then we've got valve covers for the different engines, chrome pedals, which is kind of nice, different oil pans, the fan, the air cleaner, all these little fog lights and alternators, different fans. And there's our grill and the front bumper, fire extinguisher as well. So let's bring this up into the camera and just take a look. See all the nice detailing in there. Good black wash would help. It's got those sunken little lights in there too. So overall the chrome isn't too bad. But again, like I said, you know, it would be nice if they had the stock original wheels in this thing, which are probably, you know, Krieger five star mags or something like that, instead of our good old nineties, you know, Corvette kind of Ferrari-esque kind of wheels, whatever you got in there. But still, overall, not that bad. Next up, we get our clear components, and it's kind of nice that for this era, they actually molded the front windscreen as a single piece and the rear window as a single piece with little headlights in between. And the taillights are nice because you can actually push them through the body from the back and then paint the whole bottom silver so all this reflects out. And as you can see, it is flat across the back here on our rear taillights. So again, just put them in, paint them silver, and all this will pop up and look nice. And then I do silver and then put a white backing behind the silver so it doesn't uh, show through in a weird way. And then there's our glass. So again, it looks quite nice. A lot of flash around it. Just be careful when you glue it that you don't uh, get glue on the windows. And when the rubber hits the road, we have two choices here. The stock tires are brand new for the 60s, 1967 in fact. These are Goodyear Polyglass tires. And of course, like I said before, this was a revolution in the tire industry. Because prior to this, they just had bias tires, which have a tre uh, inner cord pattern along the treads. So like in here, if you pull the tread off, you'll see... A weave like this, 45 degree angles that wrap around the entire tire and go on this way. Those are the steel bands inside. So in 67, Goodyear had come up with this polyglass reinforcing that go across those 45 degree angle bands sort of this way and they were polyglass. So that of course helped cornering, it helped braking and everything else. But 
when you come into these tires here, these are Goodyear Eagles, and these are radial tires, and they're also directional. So these are a typical 1990s, early 2000s style tire. They were revolutionary in their day, because of course the radials have steel bands in them that go this way at a 90 degree angle, and then they've got another set of steel bands going across in the opposite direction. So these ones really break well. And there's two different thicknesses on the Eagles. There's the thicker ones that are in the back and the thinner ones in the front. And like the instructions show, these are directional. So you need to look on the side of your Eagles. There's a little arrow here somewhere that shows which way they go on the body or on the wheels before you put the wheels on the body. All the letters are raised on these tires, so you can paint them white with a steady hand and a small paintbrush. Finally, in order to make a really rough kit into something beautiful in the end, we have this amazing decal sheet from AMT Ertl, which is sort of its saving grace. We do have the Mach 1 stripes on here, as well as a Mach 1 pinstripe along the back with Mustang in here. So remember to get rid of the raised letters. Or you could actually cut this out and you paint the raised letters if you want. There's a couple of gauges in here. The decals. Oh no, these are the ones that go on the side on those uh, B pillars. And here from Santa Fe, we have a 69 Mac license plate. And from Oklahoma, we have Pony Car. And that completes our look at the 1969 Mach 1 Mustang from AMT Ertl. Now, if this was your model kit, what color would you paint it? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you have built this, why not share your great photos of your great model build over on our page on Facebook? That, of course, is the Monster Hobbies page. Well, we hope you enjoyed this awesome review of the 1969 Ford Mustang Mach 1 by AMT Ertl. And if you love these great model car unboxing videos that I'm doing week after week and in the weeks to come, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell because every time I make a new video, I want you to know about it. And the only way you're going to know about it is through notifications from YouTube. So anyway, don't forget to do that. And if you want to see what's current in our model car collection that we're selling online, don't forget to check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca for all your model car needs. Anyway, next week we'll be doing another great model car video. So until then, happy model building.